Okay, so there's a few things that we do with any piano just to make sure there's consistency. We're gonna get in, make sure the fit of the keys is consistent, that they're not too tight across, that there's not any extra friction. Look, I pull up the keys here. Now you don't play the keys backwards like this typically, but you've got these that are sticking up. That does add, it, it, it changes the feel just a little bit. You're not gonna get a sticking key from that friction, but still we address it so that everything's just smooth flowing. So we're gonna get into it and start with that. Cool. Um, so that thing he just took off, maybe just tell us the parts so that piano well, yeah, this pianists is, can know. This is the key slip. And on the Steinways, uh, the elegant way to, to take that off just from the sides there. Right on. One of the interesting things while he gets set up is uh, on the newer New York Steinways, they've rounded this off. They've put the shiny finish on and these are now rounded. So it's harder to tell between Hamburg and New York Steinways now. Oh, there's so many more elements that are the same now between the Hamburg and the New Yorks. What are some of those elements? This is one right here on the cheap block. Uh -huh. What we've got is uh, an adjustment that can be, we can, I can adjust the position of the action with a screw so I can hit the sweet spot on the string. You know, with the New Yorks, you just had a plate that was fixed. You had to put shims in, had to monkey around with it to get it where you wanted. Wow. So. Could that help if you wanted to, uh, like if your piano needed an entire new keyboard action, would those cheek pieces allow you to put in a new action with more ease or no? Um, yeah, it allows for ease of adjustment for sure. Okay. For sure. Cool. So, Nice. All right, and that's we'll... the fall board I just took off there. Okay. And then we're gonna, we're gonna get out about a million tools by the time this is over, so. <laughs> And we'll do our best with this little second cam here to be getting in what he's doing here. So yeah. I'll just be moving that around as we go. This is the key upstop rail. The key upstop rail is really just for shipping. Okay. When the piano's on its side so that the keys don't come up and off of their pins. Interesting. Can you over tighten that and it would have like a negative oh, effect? Oh, then it sure would. Yeah, because if you... If these, this is propped up with nuts underneath, but if it was cinched down too low, it would start to push down the keys. Gotcha. You definitely notice that. <laughs> oh. Also with the changes that they've been making at Steinway, we've got Phillips screws instead of <laughs> slotted. Oh. So you have to get out like three different screwdrivers, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. So I'm gonna pull this EO stop rail off. They have a little branding thing here on the newer ones. This is not on mine at home. It says Kluga Klaviaturen, how do you say that? Um, it's kind of yeah. nice. So although mine at home does have that Kluga keyboard, they label it now, so that's nice so you can see it. Yeah, that's a company that Steinway owns that makes the, uh, the keyboards in Germany. Even though they owned the company, there were still two different keyboard types for Hamburg and New York, but now they've switched to the Hamburg. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, there's a few different elements that are that are in there that you can see when we when we get into it. So now I'm going to so that I can access the keys and see that they're not they don't have too much friction. I'm going to take off. What we call the action stack or the top stack, some people call it. So mostly what I do is just turn screws mm -hmm. for hours on end, but <laughs> it has a pretty neat result in the end. So, oh, before I, you know, Josh, you were noticing that the piano was kind of weak going up into here. I feel like it's kind of mushy throughout and to, and to grade it the way we're going to want to, to match and blend. I'm gonna harden the hammers right now with a solution that's actually going to uh, get a lot more just raw sound out of it. It'll brighten the tone a little bit. It'll be over the top by the time it dries. But once we put that hardener on, um, what I'm using now, traditionally we used lacquer to harden the hammers and lacquer thinner or acetone, depending on what effect you wanted. But I'm gonna use a chemical called Paraloid B72 and it dries in about 45 minutes. We'll be able to see Nice. what's going on with it. So let me go grab that actually before we continue and then we'll go ahead and put that on the hammers. Okay. <laughs> 